Hello folks, welcome to the channel. Now, this uh, video I'm going to be trying to explain some of the MIDI mapping features that you'll find in English Studio. If you look here, up in the top right corner, uh, you'll see the little gear cog. Um, if you click on that, because first of all, what we want to do is make sure that English can see your MIDI controller. Uh, if you click on the little MIDI, MIDI settings tab there, a second box will open up, which for some reason doesn't come up on the screen here um, on OBS, but uh, it will give you the options to select the MIDI controller you want and then put a tick box beside the notes and the mapping section uh, settings and that will enable everything for you. So coming out of there, everything's looking good. Uh, now, right beside the little settings gear cog, you'll see there is um, a MIDI plug. Click on the MIDI plug. And everything gets a green outline, as you can see. Now, all of these boxes on here, all these elements have uh, information stored in them at the moment. You can see the writing in there. Um, we want to start with a fresh mapping. So we're going to hit create new mapping. And we type in whatever we call it. We'll call it new. Right, first things we're going to do, this is dead simple. First thing we're going to do is map the pads. Until now, these pads have not been mappable in Endless. Uh, you had to use the keyboard instead. And frankly, I found it quite confusing and I couldn't really use Studio to jam with in the way that I wanted to. Um, because I'm not much of a keys player, I tend to prefer to use the pads. The latest update, which you should definitely get if you haven't already downloaded it, it's got loads and loads of new features, but one of the best ones is that the pads are fully mappable now. So if I click and highlight on the lower left of the pads, and then I go to my controller, let's bring the controller up. There we are. And just a quick note there, because it took me a while to work out how to get it in MIDI mode. Um, on the Mark III, press Shift and Channel. Um, and it will change to the MIDI setting. So this is the Mark III in its normal kind of iteration. And then shift, uh, channel, and it's in MIDI uh, control mode. So, <clears throat> right, you probably already knew that, but just in case. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to map the pads. So we click on the bottom lower left pad, and as you can see, the outline around it has gone yellow. So we come to the Mark III, Press the corresponding pad on the controller. And we do this for all of the pads until all of the grid mapped. Right. Easy, yeah? I told you it was easy. Right. Now, a couple of things. I had a couple of issues um, with things triggering things I didn't want them to when the, once they were mapped or whatever. Um, if you need to change your channel that you're using, your MIDI channel, um, or if you want to take off the velocity settings or something like that, for instance, you need to actually go into the controller editor, which is a separate piece of software from Native Instruments, um, which you will have if you have a Mark III, I'm sure. And you can go in and, uh, and change all those settings there. Right, now we've got all the pads mapped here, which is great. Next thing we want to do is these eight uh, macro controls on the Mark III, we want to map those to the sound design or sound control knobs. So the first one I've highlighted here is pitch. As you can see, it's turned yellow. And I'm going to give pitch, uh, sorry, the first macro knob a wee twiddle. And that's it stored. Next one, same again, same again. As you can see, it's very quick and easy to do this. Now, when I said I was just mapping to the Machina Mark III, I actually lied a bit. I'm going to be mapping this to two different MIDI controllers. So the other controller that I'm going to be using is this one here, the iRig Blueboard. It's a little MIDI controlled, uh, sorry, it's a little Bluetooth uh, MIDI foot switch. And it's great. I highly recommend it. Right. Now. We'll go to the first, uh, sorry, to the eight bar section on the looper and hit my first pedal. Four bar section, next one, two bars, and then the one bar section is mapped to the bar right pedal. Right. Next, we come to create new riff. Create new riff, I'm just going to use the note repeat arc button. Um, use whatever button you want. <laughs> 
Okay. Excuse me, I've got better hiccups today. Right, um, anyway. The next thing we come along to, just above the pads here, um, and the, the looper, is the selector, left and right selection, for when you're inside an instrument bank and you want to sample through all the... Uh, sorry, um, scroll through all the presets. Now, I don't generally bother mapping this to anything on the controller because it's it's not really applicable. I use the... Um, it's already pre-mapped to the arrow keys on my keyboard. I just use that. It's much simpler. So next thing we do is we come up to the source selectors at the top here. So the first one is in the top left here, we've got orange, which is for drums. And on the Mark III, we've got this really handy little selector kind of uh, section here. And as you can see, it's already colored the right colors for us, which is super handy. So we click on the orange and then we click on add, same as we have done all the way through. So we got uh, the orange for the drums, yellow for synths and melodies, blue for the bass, purple for the sampler, uh, we have green for the FX, and the all important, might line it in, is there in a kind of pinky red on this one. Right. So, <clears throat> we've just about done all the major kind of knobs and buttons on the Mark III. Um, the last thing we haven't mapped is these selectors across the top. So what we'll do, if we go to the mixer section, you'll see there's eight tracks there with faders and, uh, and all that, and then two boxes above each fader. The first box you come to above the fader is the uh, enable or mute. So I'm going to map those to the top row of the Mark III. So we'll just highlight, press, highlight, press. Do -do 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 -do. As you can see, it's super easy and we are done. Right, okay. Now, it looks like we've run out of things on the Mark III buttons-wise. So, what we can do, if you look on the first screen here, we're on knob page one. If you click on the right arrow, it brings up knob page two. Now, all of these switches at the top and the eight encoders are now mappable again. They're free again to be mapped. So the top buttons are the top sort of square above uh, each channel is the targets. So when you want to target your effects, etc. So we'll go to target and we'll map these buttons on page two to all of the targets. And then this is great. We come down and we map the rotary encoders to each of the faders. And this really does mean that you can... You can't go hands-free with it yet, because there's certain things, like on the effects and stuff, that you still need to use your mouse or your trackpad, in my case, on. But mapping it this way... You, you're not using the mouse very often, you know, you can really jam just on the machine with this and it's um, it's just fantastic. I, I can't I can't recommend it enough. Right. So we've got it all mapped there. Let's go and have a wee check and see if we've done it right. So press on the MIDI plug icon up in the top right again and it brings us back into the standard operating mode. Now, let's try. That's cool. It's firing that pad. That's good. There's a bit of a delay on there though. I'm gonna just go in and uh, just change my sample rate setting into 64 samples. There we go. Uh, Audio settings, right, okay, sorry. We've got the pads mapped, they're working, that's great. Let's just switch this to a synth actually, because it's good easier. We've got more um more buttons and knobs. Let's just check and see if the knobs are working. Right, okay. Well that's interesting. For some reason, ah, I'll tell you why they're not working. Because I'm on page two. Page one. There we go. All the knobs are now controlling all the different parameters for the synths there the drums, bass, whatever, it's uh, those six knobs are now fully matched on there, which is brilliant. 
um that's that's just working fantastic now let's see uh we want to go and check that we've mapped the enable buttons and the target buttons and the faders as well so we'll need to bring up some kind of audio let me just click on this riff here right as you can see we've got eight tracks of uh fairly chilled out audio playing there now different loops we're on page one so page one means that these ones here are should be attached to the mute so let's check that yep look at that perfect can mute in and out that's great okay now if i press the right arrow again and now as you can see the targets are coming on so I can target which channel I'm wanting to run my effects through with that. Right, going back to, in fact, actually, no, let's keep it on page, uh, knob page two and check if this is working on the mixer. As you can see, corresponding to the macros on the Mark III, we now have level control on the mixer. That is brilliant. Press the left arrow, we're back into knob page one, and we're back to controlling the instrument parameters again. Um, right, well, folks, that is how you map English Studio. Now, one thing I'll just mention before I go uh, about English Studio, and I might get into this in another video if people are interested, but um, obviously I'm on the Mac. Uh, English Studio is only on Mac and iOS at the moment, um, as of the 15th of September, but within the next two to three weeks, I believe, uh, the Windows version is going to be landing. So, uh, so yeah, exciting, exciting times. Now, um, what I wanted to mention just before I leave is the routing options that I have. Um, English Studio uh, for its input can be a bit tricky. Um, now, there is a free option that I've been using until recently called Black Hole, which is um, basically an audio routing device and it allows you to route everything into English Studio really effortlessly. Um, however, it's not the most user-friendly thing and it is prone to having the odd crash and stuff like that as well. Kind of drove me a bit nuts, to be honest. So in the end, I decided to go for a paid version. I think it was around about £90. Uh, and I went for Rogue Amoeba's Loopback, um, which is an incredible piece of software. Let me quickly just bring the screen up for you. So you can see uh, on the kind of mid-left there, there are all these boxes. These are sources. So the top one is my version of Ableton. Then I've got my uh, guitar effects. I've got Endless as a source. I've got the browser, yeah, Chrome browser as a source. Um, I've got my hand drum, my hand sonic as a source. I've got the machine two, machine two software. I've got that as a source. And these are all running into the input of English Studio. And basically all I need to do is switch the on off switch on any one of these sources to bring it in or switch it off for the mic input, which is just, it's the handiest thing. It's so quick, it's so effortless. Um, highly, highly recommend it to people if you're gonna go down the studio route. Uh, loop back in on the Mac is uh, a real time saver. Um, if you're using PC, then I guess you could be using uh, software like Jack or something along those lines. Uh, I'm sure that there's probably loads of options on PC, more so than there are on Mac, no doubt. Anyway, folks, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's been instructional and uh, illuminating for you. And if you'd like to um, get me to do any more, or if you'd like to cover any other subjects, just let me know in the comments, and um, yeah, I'll, I'll get to it. All right, thanks very much now. Cheers. Bye-bye.